video is a story time video because when I came back from Jersey, something rather traumatic happened. <laughs> this was honestly one thing that really, I couldn't cope. Like, I got upset, I got angry, I got stressed, I was not happy, I cried. So much happened in the space of about 20, 25 minutes and I've just realized my window is open so I'm gonna shut that. <laughs> so, you're probably asking, what happened? Well, I'm gonna tell you, I lost my luggage on the airplane. Now, I am someone who's always very, very careful and always prepared when it comes to flying on planes, getting to an airport on time and that sort of thing. So when we were going out to Jersey to film, I made sure everyone was there at three, between 3pm 3 and half past three because our flight was leaving at like half five I think and you're meant to get there like two hours before to get through security and everything and that was fine. That was fine. Coming back however was a completely different story. <laughs> so the island of Jersey is tiny, it's so small and where we were staying we were only like five to eight minute like car journey away from the airport so we weren't that far and Jersey being a small island it has a small airport so our flight on the way back was at 20 to 9 in the evening and it got to like half seven and I was thinking okay I'm starting to freak out a little bit because we're not at the airport we still got to check our bags in we got to go through security and like wait around like I was internally freaking out right now <laughs> and then uh, the director Jordan who is from Jersey lives there like knows all about everything he was like oh no you don't really need to be there until like half an hour before your flight leaves so we get in the car and then some people are like oh don't know where the bag is or whatever and I'm like sitting in the car kind of like slowly freaking out thinking oh my god we're not gonna get on the flight home and I had plans the next day and I was like oh my god I need to get home right now because to be honest I kind of had it not the best of times in Jersey when I was there and um, so I really just wanted to get home if I'm being honest and then I look on our boarding passes and it said the gate closes at 10 past 8 and it was now like quarter to 8 and I was like so scared <laughs> I was like oh my god we're not gonna get there on time we got there with like five minutes to spare <laughs> we checked in our bags uh, I had to wait around for like five minutes or something because we had to check certain bags into a different area because they're like fragile because they were like filming lights um, so we had to check them in at some place else we get through security fine um, get on the other side looking for our gate number info and it still says gate info at 7 50 p.m at which time it was like five past eight and I was like oh my god now we're gonna be delayed I was like I can't handle this the stress of everything was just like too much I was like oh why 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 I just want to go home then I get a call from Jordan and he's like oh hey where are you lot and I'm standing there thinking what do you mean where are we we're in an airport he literally dropped us off five minutes ago <laughs> like why is he asking where we are so I'm like oh we've just got free security like why and he's like well we've just found a bag that kind of needs to go back with the equipment um so yeah we're gonna come by and give that to you and I was like what <laughs> why why was this not packed? Because this was an item that someone else, one other person of the crew was like, oh, I swear we had this, but we couldn't find it. And then they found it when they got home. Luckily, they only live five minutes away. So they jumped in the car again to like bring it to us. I go back to the security man and be like, oh, I've left a bag on the other side. Can I go and grab it? Which sounds dodgy in an airport. <laughs> which didn't kind of register with me until after I said it. And he kind of looked at me like, uh, right. So he goes and talks to someone, some other guy in like another room. And he's like, let's check um, to see, I don't know, security cameras or something to see if any other bags have been left. And they come back like a couple of minutes later. And then he's like, no, there's no bags on the other side. And I'm like, oh my God, that sounds like a bomb. I've left a bomb or something. So I was like, well, we left it in my friend's car and they're coming 
like to give it to us can I just go and grab it and he was like no I'll go and grab it so then we had to wait for that but luckily I got that and by the time I got back they'd announced the gate number that we had to go to so it was probably quite lucky that our flight was delayed otherwise we probably would have missed the flight so that was the first half then we get on the plane and it's fine it's fine it's like a 40 minute flight it's great it's perfect it's fine we get on the other side because we're sitting right at the back the only exit was at the front they didn't open up the back entrance for some reason i don't know why so we all had to like wait till the last people because we were like one of the last to get off and so by the time we get to the baggage reclaim there was hardly any bags left which was kind of nice because we didn't have to like wait around for everything and then we could instantly see which ones were ours we pull all the bags out and we're like yeah this is great get to mine now on the way there me and one of my friends one of the other crew members had shared a bag together on the way back we added two extra bags because of something apparently it was cheaper to add two 20 kilogram bags rather than one like extra big one i was given my own suitcase by the director and so this suitcase was like massive it's like one of the big big ones and it's silver and um, it had like a massive kind of hole in the side which we taped up with tape and so we pulled this um silver case off and i instantly like that's not my case and everyone's like what do you mean what do you mean and i was like it doesn't have the tape on it and i was like my face just dropped because not only were my items of clothing in that case so was some equipment that had to go back to my university so i start to freak out <laughs> and i'm like oh my god someone's got the case we're not going to be able to return stuff to ravensbourne i'm going to get fined i'm going to have to pay this like all these things were going through my head in the space of about 10 seconds and I was just like I just want to go home Chris was meant to be picking me up from the airport but I hadn't heard from him and I was like oh this is just horrible and I was trying to hold it together situations like that like make me cry because I can't control what's going on like I just kind of crumble and freak out so I was just like oh my god what are we gonna do so we leave the baggage reclaim area with that bag and I go and talk to someone with a high vis jacket on who worked at Gatwick and I said to him, look, this isn't my case, but it's the exact same one as mine. Um, someone else is my case. What do I do? And he just turned to me and said, "Uh oh, that's not good. And I was like, that's not a way you react to someone saying that they don't have their luggage. No, not at all. Anyway, I was too kind of like disorientated to really care what his opinion was, but he told me to go upstairs to the EasyJet like area and talk to customer services. So that's what I did. When I get to the customer services desk, there is three people in front of me, I think, and one person on the desk. I was like, oh my God, this is gonna take forever. All I want is to go home and sleep in my own bed. So I'm waiting there at the desk, waiting for the people in front of me to like do what they need to do and leave. And then I get to the desk, bearing in mind I'm like crying at this point. <laughs> I'm like so sad. I'm like, I just, I don't want to be here. I want my stuff. I want to go home. I get to the desk and I can barely talk. <laughs> I'm like, um, sorry, but this isn't my case. And I think someone else has got my case. And he was like, sorry, what did you say? So now I had to try and speak it again, say it again. Luckily, one of my friends was with me. And then another member of the crew was there as well to try and like calm me down. And I was explaining to him what happened, what my case looked like. I gave him the, like, you know, they put a sticker thing on the case to say like where it's going. I gave him that off the one that I had so he could scan it and find out who it belonged to and stuff. And literally, as I was doing this, I turned around and a young guy was walking towards me with my case and I just, oh, I just burst into tears and I was like oh my god thank you so much and like he could see that obviously I was crying anyway so like he could see how much it meant to me and bless him he was so sorry he was like I'm so sorry I, I only realized that it wasn't my case because of the black tape when I got to the train station and honestly I didn't I don't care I didn't care at that point what had happened I was just so happy to have my suitcase back and the equipment honestly my first instinct when I saw him walking towards me was to run and hug him but I kind of refrained from doing that because I didn't know him and that could have been a little bit too weird. But I was so happy that 
he was just there with my staff. So I didn't lose it and it was great. But those like 20 minutes where I thought I had, I was freaking out and I hated it and I just couldn't. It was not a nice point in my life. So that is my story time video of when I nearly lost my luggage. <laughs> anyway, if you have enjoyed this story time video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new, subscribe, why not? It's free. And I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.